Okay, while we're waiting for uh, ChemDraw21 to appear and to give us 3D molecules piped straight into PowerPoint, uh, try this completely stupid Excel hack instead. So all I've got here is a molecule of methanol, and if I begin to spin it around, I can see some 3D structure to it. Uh, got benzene over here. If I spin this around, I can start to see that there are carbon atoms going to swing in front of me. I can start to spin it around that axis instead. Do it a few more times. Spin it around the remaining axis instead. Just come back towards us. So how how do you do this? This is. Um, more straightforward than it seems actually, but obviously this is not the software to do it with. So we start with some XYZ coordinates. You can get these from the internet. Uh, I'm taking them from some Gaussian input files, amongst other things. And of course we need three angles, uh, which we can convert to radians. And then you need a rotation matrix. So you can look up what this involves. It's just uh, um, it's a, it's a matrix operation for rotating coordinates, and you can have the rotated coordinates right here from with M mult. So that's fairly straightforward. And if you're on 365 for the dynamic ranges, it'll get to the right size for you automatically. Next thing you want to do is you want to figure out where will these coordinates appear when you project it onto a two dimensional sheet. And for that, you can just take the first. Well, take any two columns and you'll project along it. Um, but if you really want to show off, you want to divide that by the Z direction. So this is whatever the um, X and Y directions are, divide, divide the Z direction. That means as something gets further and further away, uh, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's depth queuing. Uh, the four times just to kind of re-enlarge it to the fit and plus five here just to make sure all those Z values are a positive number because you start dividing by zero or a negative number, uh, all bets are off with that technique for queuing depth. And then there's a bit of bond information that I've had to do manually. I haven't bothered to put in the effort to read a Gaussian input file directly. So you just type in here, bond number one is gonna go from one to three, bond number two is gonna go from three to five those uh, atoms being these numbers, and then a list of uh, bonds here. So if you want to do that in a line graph in Excel, you obviously you don't want to join every atom. You've got to put this blank space here. So two lines is an X, Y, Z coordinate of where um, the atom's going to be. And so a line will start on these coordinates, end on these coordinates. And that's looking them up using knowing what the starting atom is and the ending atom and using the index function to look it up from those lists of coordinates. So this second table, or third table actually, is where it will appear on a graph. Can you shove all that into a graph? Add a couple of uh, sliders um, from the developer tab uh, to control your angle. And then there you have it. You've got some depth queued 3D stuff in uh, an Excel chart, so utterly pointless. Uh, not a remarkable amount of effort if you know how to do the matrix transformations and everything. You could do it with uh, ethanol as well. Here we go. That's spinning around to us. Obviously, it's not perfect. It's not a 3D graphics engine, but you can see the start of it. Uh, it gets used to matrix transforms and try to visualize things at 3D as well. So there you go.